Howdy, everybody. This is uh, Jeremiah and Michaela Harrison with Liturgy of the Home. This is our Saturday video and also mm -hmm. the release of Easter Part 2. Mm -hmm. Michaela and her sisters have been slaving away over the last couple of weeks. And just, what, last night or was it the day before? It was like 2 in the morning. Oh, yeah. We've, we've definitely they stayed up late. Night. <laughs> so they got it finished, and then I got it all uploaded. And then I've already sent out notice to everybody. But if you guys, if, if some of you have you know, purchased our calendar and haven't heard about part two, and this is this video is the first time you're here, but send me an email, jeremiah at liturgyofthehome.com. Mm -hmm. uh, when you bought the calendar, you should have already got a, a way to log in to a download area where you could download the files. That's where I put part two. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we want to walk through, uh, basically this is the fourth week after Easter. Or no, well, okay, the way. So, well, yeah. it's called the, it's the, it's the third Sunday after right. Easter. Third Sunday after Easter. Very good. So, starting in the beginning, let's let's zoom up a bit. And of course, we have our sort we have some source images to share with you too, yes. as well. And now I'm going to there give it, it to goes. Michaela. There we are. All right. So we'll begin with Sunday. Um, uh, Sunday happens to be also the 25th um, of April, which the 25th is the feast of Saint Mark, um, and it's also the Greater Litanies which we'll go more in depth in another video. Yeah. I think we don't want to make this video too long, but... Dom Guernsey has something really... He, he gives a really neat explanation as, as to the Greater Litanies, why that day was chosen. I'll make a separate video mm -hmm. uh, you, that'll, that'll link to from the description of this video if you guys want to know more about the Greater Litanies. So um, I will begin by uh, reading a little bit about St. Mark, but then we'll go into the, the Gospel too. Um, and this is, again, from the... Roman Martyrology, Martyrology, and it's not very long, but um, it says, At Rome, the Greater Litanies at St. Peter's. At Alexandria, the birthday of St. Mark the Evangelist, disciple and interpreter of the Apostle St. Peter. And as you'll notice in the calendar, you have St. Mark there with the lion, which is his um, symbol. The each evangelist has a different creature, and Mark's is the lion. And you have Peter above him holding the keys and pointing to our Lord um, to show that his gospel was written under St. Peter's direction. So that's what it's saying here. Um, he wrote his gospel at the request of the faithful at Rome and taking it with him proceeded to Egypt and founded a church at Alexandria where he was the first to preach Christ. Afterwards, being arrested for the faith, he was bound, dragged over stones, and endured great afflictions. Finally, he was confined to prison, where being comforted by the visit of an angel, and even an apparition of our Lord himself, he was called to the heavenly kingdom in the eighth year of the reign of Nero. It's a little, little about um, St. Mark. Um, moving on to the gospel, um, our Lord, we we put a little excerpt from the gospel that flows through the, throughout the week, which says, A little while, and now you shall not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall see me. Um, Christ is preparing them for his ascension. And so in the picture, you see Christ, and he's pointing with his finger upward. But also in the border imagery, you see Christ's feet uh below the cloud right, the and that's a it's little coming. a little hint at the coming ascension and then if you notice in the border imagery we have um the what do you call this cycle of like going from the the caterpillar to the butterfly the um, oh yeah as a particular name i just not remember Dude. right now anyway but the, the the life cycle of the butterfly there we go. because okay. i thought that's a beautiful springtime image um for not you know the, the the caterpillar goes inside the cocoon and you don't see them and then you it comes out as mm. a beautiful butterfly so that's why i chose that imagery to go with this particular week and another thing to notice you can see this in the whole calendar as we're leading up to to ascension mm -hmm. everything on this first part really is kind of centering on ascension you can see each of these gospels where our lord is speaking right. and then the gospel itself it's all a preparation Right. There's a theme each of these weeks is sort of preparing for when our Lord will go up into heaven. Yes. All right. Um, let's S go on to oh, yeah. Monday. Monday. Do you want to uh, show them a source image? Is that what you want to go to? Uh, let's see. Go ahead. Cool. St. Cletus and Marcellus. Sure. Is that the next one? Let's see here. <laughs> then we have this. Okay. Oh, this, okay. This is an image. 
that's probably what you where you got Christ. Yeah, can you make it larger? If I yeah, can see yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's kind of pixelated, but that's probably it is. Um, this is a. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name. Oh, I I look for this particular artist. This is medieval, and I just think his his Christ have those is. Got in our show notes. Got have those notes. <laughs> We're not prepared. Sorry. Oh well. <laughs> we'll get, get better. Anyway, I I know this artist really well. Whenever I'm scanning uh, images, I can pick out this artist pretty quick. So anyway, there's a example picture. Uh, no, oh, there's St. Mark. There's an image of St. Mark. That's the one with the lion. And this is where I took the composition from for the calendar. Let's see. There you go. Right. Is there a next one? This oh, yeah. That's a, very, that's a very medieval one, yes. I just thought that was a really, it looks really neat. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. There's the lion. There, there's He's writing with the book, writing the gospel. Oh. See, there's St. Peter up in, the, up in the border. Yeah. And here we are for Monday. Yes. Very pixelated, unfortunately, but these early popes. I'm telling here, you, if you have popes. a, it's hard to find good pictures of the early popes. Um, here we go. At Rome, the birthday of Saint Cletus, the pope who governed the church, the sec, sorry, who governed the church, the second after the apostle Saint Peter, and was crowned with martyrdom in the persecution of Domi Domitian. Domitian. And Marcellinus, Pope and Martyr, whose birthday is commemorated on the 25th of October. So you got both martyrs, both have their palm branches. Um, Looks like they're having a conversation. Yeah, it was funny when I see this image, it makes me wonder what, what they are talking about. I bet they're talking about a lot of things going on in the church right now. Yeah, oh my word. <laughs> no, I'll, yeah. I want to make a little quick point. That's a good point. Folks. So we're still developing the language of these calendars. Uh, so... When you see these saints and they are there's clouds around them or they're on the clouds, it's um, they're in heaven. They're in heaven. Yeah. If yeah. it's a scene from their life, like it would have happened on earth, then I try not to put the clouds. Like is the next day, Cedar, yes. uh, Saint Peter Canisius. This is sort of a scene in his yes. life. Yes. Yes. Because he taught that he worked with the children. Right. Um, we can show the star, the source images All for right. him. Let's go for that one. There's two that I have. Let's see. There's one right there. There's a stained glass Saint window. Dionysius. I see the children. Okay. The next one. There's another one of him out teaching the children. Isn't that beautiful? Both of them are stained glass windows in this case. So St. Peter Canisius, priest of the Society of Jesus, confessor and doctor of the church, who departed to the Lord on the 21st of December. We certainly need his prayers. A Jesuit. A good Jesuit. Yeah, we just listened to that, that whole thing about the history of the Jesuits. Yeah. The interview by... Uh, who was doing On it? meaning of Catholic. Yeah, that was really interesting to hear the, very, the history and. Very, yeah, well, they're, they're doing a seven-part series all of Fatima, okay. and this this late last one is coming out. Uh, it's it's heavy, but it gives you a, it gives you history leading up to and around Our Lady of Fatima. Uh, it's very worth it to listen to because you begin to understand the climate, the sort of temporal or even political climate mm -hmm. around the time when Our Lady came to those children and, and asked to have con Russia consecrated to her. You start to understand the backstory. But a lot of it's anyway, going into the, the Jesuits and all the, the good that right. they've done for the church and well, the, of their course. history. So. I mean, they're, they're one of the greatest orders. It's just yeah. it's bad. It's, it's just horrible to see what's happened to them. But yes. uh, I'm sure that uh, Ignatius is pulling for some sort of reformation. <laughs> Okay. Next, uh, St. Paul of the Cross be Wednesday, and you, and you have also here St. Louis de Montfort. Yep, all right. So St. Paul of the Cross, priest and confessor, founder of the Congregation of the Cross and Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. He went to his repose in the Lord on the 18th of April. Um, I wanted to make a little point about the art. Oh, actually. Okay, well, here's, here's the source image that, that we used. Um, and there's another one, too, of the statue. This Because this was just a cropped image of him. Yeah, okay, hold on. i got to scan back. Okay. Okay, here's a statue of, of him. Um, I preferred the face on the other one. Um, yeah. St. Paul of the Cross. Yeah. So you wanted to make a point about the art. and I. Uh, could you, are you able to zoom yep. zoom in yep. on his, um, on him so you can see details? Okay. So, as many of you might know, we paint these with watercolor. Um but it can be really hard with watercolor to leave the paper white. And so in the past calendars, we've had to paint around all the white areas, but we had a good friend that told us about this masking tool. And so you're able to paint uh, like this little mask and it protects the paper. So then you can paint the black over it. So this, Whatever. this, the yeah. detailing, instead of being painted with white, 
on top of the black that actually it, we we masked the paper and was, we were able to paint his black robes and so i love her she yeah, <laughs> saved then, us a lot of well, time well the la- and then you scrape the mask off exactly you then the, the mask off. scrapes off and, and then, then it that, leaves the paper that so leaves the paper same with the through. rosary so that is a new th- tool we have um Talk that we were able to here? the rosary here and for, and for the other ones too so that's so yeah, um this was used also. anyway so there's St. Paul the Cross, uh, and then St. Louis de Montfort. He um, he is not on the old calendar. He's on the new calendar because this is the anniversary of the day that he died. And anyone who has done the 30 day, 33 um, preparation for consecration, consecration. Um, he's helped for a lot of people. So, um, And while we're on this day, I um, want to explain a little bit about where we're coming from a lot of people have asked us are you old calendar strictly uh are you obviously we're not doing new calendar um our our goal is to share as much as we can with our children of the faith and though the calendar um it's not a it's not meant to be a museum piece we have to be really careful when we add in new things and so we're trying to develop a language that will um, kind of not cause conflict, but will put in things that we want to share with our children and that allow parents to be able to explain what they want. Um, so St. Louis de Montfort, he's not put in here as a commemoration. He's not, doesn't have his own day. He's here because it's the anniversary of the day that he died. Right. Well, and it's true if you think about what's the purpose of a calendar, or at least the purpose of one of the purposes of the liturgical calendar is to bring to our minds to help us remember people worth remembering that were themselves icons of our Lord. Uh, peop- these are the lives of all the saints who have gone before us who are now in heaven sort of you know, cheering us on and helping interceding for us. And so persons who have lived holy lives whom the church has you know, raised to the altar, they are the ones that, that are given those feast days. But... Uh, even in our modern times, there are some persons who lived, as far as we know, extraordinary lives that, that are worth uh, worth remembering. So we're we're trying very hard to not put ourselves up as authorities, but also trying to put out so that way things that are important for our children to know are there. So. St. Louis de Montfort is here. He's on the new calendar, but he's in the border imagery. And then we, I've agonized over what to do with some she of has. these newer saints. He'll tell you. Um, some of you may know, and some of you may not know, there's a lot of debate about the newer canonizations. Um, there was a lot of, ch- there were changes that were made to the canonization process. And so you have Catholics, and we have Catholics purchasing our calendars that are the whole range of very, very traditional Catholics, all the way up to, not, maybe no. not so traditional. <clears throat> and um, we don't mean for these calendars to be a source of debate. Um, every the, the state of the church right now is, you know, it's in a difficult situation to say the least. So our goal with the calendars is to give parents the tools to be able to teach their children and to choose how, how they present it. So we decided to go and try this. And we, we, we may end up changing this later. Um, we decided to put... Gianna Mola in here and rather than um, putting her life we've put the other saints we've had the idea of making all the saints from this past from the 20th century putting them in picture frames and telling the children that these are saints that lived really close to our century that sorry well I guess it's last century (laughs) but you know, we, we like to put up pictures, and, and many of these saints, we would have photographs of them, um, and they their lives were exemplary. So if you'll notice, like, we don't have them with a halo, and we don't have their name, um, but they led very heroic lives. And so for people that, um, in your homes, if you refer to her as Saint Gianna Mola, then you can tell your children, this is Saint Gianna Mola, this was the day that she died and she gave her life. And if in your family you disagree with the new canonization process and you don't refer to her as a saint, you can still tell your children this was a very uh, holy woman who was very heroic. And so we just didn't want to leave her out. And we don't like Maximilian Colby, um, even Padre Pio. Um, he was canonized after the changes were made. 
Um, so I've just agonized over this. I don't want to just strictly follow the old calendar because some of these new saints are so important. Um, but I'm also aware that there's this real difficulty <clears throat> and I don't want to shy away from it. So mm. we're, we're really developing this and we'd ask for your prayers. And if anybody, um, I mean, I'm sure that has any const- helpful input, constructive input. I mean, <laughs> it can be a cause of a great debate. And yeah. I know that the debate's there and I'm not trying to answer the debate. I'm just trying to put information that parents can use to train their kids. And I hope that makes sense. Explain yeah, okay. <laughs> I think so. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. Anyway, what, uh, yeah. Just wanted to let you know. Co- where uh, we're comments at. are welcome. I'd like, I'd like to have you have your feedback. What uh, What are some of your thoughts on this? This is a. Uh, okay. Yeah. We got through. All right. So we'll go on from there. We have now. Next, we have on the 29th, Saint Peter of Verona. Yes. Okay. Right? He has a palm branch, so he's a martyr, and he has a big gash in his head because that is how he. Gave his life for our Lord. He has Here a he sword in him too, though. Well, yes. St. Peter, a martyr of the Order of Preachers who was slain for the Catholic faith on the 6th of April. Um, he's a Dominican. There's actually two Dominicans back to back. Oh, there's St. Louis de Montfort. St. Louis de Montfort. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Papa, we yeah. have two, two images two of St. Louis de Montfort. There's All right. St. Peter. There's St. Peter of Verona. St. Peter of Verona. Um, so he's got the... <clears throat> you know anything about why he's... You know, I've lo- I tried looking this up. It's ver- Saint Benedict does the Saint same Benedict, right? thing, right. and I think it's to tell us to you know, be qu- us be quiet, listen to God. But I believe this is over the front part of a church, like when you walk into the church. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's probably saying, "Be quiet, like come in here and listen to God." Is probably what he's telling the people as they're entering in. But I couldn't verify that. So um, anyway, I just thought yeah. it was a, a very intriguing picture. All right. So next yes. we have another Dominican, one of our favorites. That's and right. That happens Catherine to be our, the date of our anniversary. Right. We're coming up on ten years this uh, April thirtieth. So, Saint Catherine ten of <laughs> Saint Catherine of Siena, Virgin of the Third Order of Saint Dominic, who on the previous day went to her heavenly spouse. So, the feast of Saint Peter of Rona is actually the day that she died, but this is her feast day, and I've had a very long devotion to Saint Catherine of Siena. Almost took her for my confirmation name, but also loved St. Rose of Lima and could not figure out which one I was going to choose. And then when I came to learn that St. Rose of Lima's first words that she was able to read miraculously because no one taught her to read, um, God just infused the knowledge into her. The first word she read was the title of a book about St. Catherine of Siena. And she had a strong devotion to St. Catherine of Siena. And so, so I you thought, get both of them. I'll take Rose and then I get St. Catherine of Siena as through well. Rose. So anyway. Catherine of Siena through Rose. I love her very much. Let's okay. see here. And to look at the... Oh, yes. Oh, that's so, another one for, for... So here he has the, the, the machete Verona, in Peter his Verona. head. Yeah, I should have mentioned this. I'm sorry. I'm bouncing around. The machete's in his head. Um, but we have that also for St. Thomas Beckett. And right, so I kind of right. wanted to change up the imagery for the children so they could not confuse them. I see. Hence that one. Okay. Now, St. Catherine. Okay, there she is. I love we that We have a picture. couple. You have a couple here. I do. This was my favorite one of her, but there's a few others that I think are really beautiful. Here's a one that's a statue that I thought was also really well crafted. Another one. Another one. This is a very well-known statue of Saint Catherine of Siena. It's just so beautifully crafted. And oh. look at this one. Can you zoom oh. in a little bit? I thought this one was fascinating. I didn't put it in the right. calendar because it's 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 very unique. But anyone who knows <clears> the story of Saint Catherine of Siena. Which, by the way, we're hoping to start telling more of the stories of saints, like in a separate right. video. So a separate video. Or also, we're working on the companion booklet still. The companion booklet, this this companion booklet and the last one has a uh, reading for the liturgy of each day. But, I, but reading through Dom Granger, almost all the saints, he has a beautiful little biography. A little longer, a bit longer than what, you know, Michaela's reading in the Roman Martyrology. Mm-hmm. So I, we're going to start actually may, either putting that in the companion a uh, booklet instead of liturgy, or adding a a uh, a companion booklet to the companion booklet, which has all of those all these stories. Yes. So look for that. I think uh, look for that to, to come. So anyway, anyone who knows the story, Saint Catherine did so much for the church, and so here is a statue of her holding the barge of Saint Peter and supporting it, and you see the keys on the the mast hmm. or the um, the sail oh, of the ship. Right, right. So I thought that was beautiful. Back to the counter now. We are, our little screen here is obscuring. 
Oh, can That's right. Well, yeah. I can actually. Oh. You can move us. Yes. <laughs> we try not to bounce things around so much, but yep. oh well. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move us. All right, everybody, Sorry. watch out. Here, Here we, we go. go. <laughs> flipping to the other side. That was kind of odd, but there Sorry. we go. That way we can see the end of the days here. And the final day for this week is St. Joseph the Workman on the Saturday, yeah. the 1st of May. Yep. The 1st of May. So I'll read a little bit about the history of this feast day. Um, it says, To foster deep devotion to St. Joseph among Catholics, and in response to the May Day celebrations for workers sponsored by communists, Pope Pius XII instituted the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker in 1955. This feast extends the long relationship between Joseph and the cause of workers in both Catholic faith and devotion. Now that's an important piece. I never knew that. Yeah. This is like an this is a response to communism here. Yeah. The lifting up of a of the proper the proper image of a worker. Communism was lifting up this sort of perverse image. Yeah. Oh wow. So it's an important feast. Um, it says, beginning in the book of Genesis, the dignity of human work has long been celebrated as a participation in the creative work of God. By work, humankind both fulfills the command found in Genesis to care for the earth and to be productive in their labors. St. Joseph, the carpenter and foster father of Jesus, is but one example of the holiness of human labor. So I thought that history was really interesting. Yeah, that is very, very good. So, all right, well, that's this week. There's so much. By the way, this is probably one of my favorite calendars. Yeah, well, we have some really neat things also your, that are your, coming your up method, still. You know, with the tablet, you started using the tablet for the ink drawing, and that enabled you to get a lot more detail. Yeah. You probably should notice, folks, that the as the, as we're going on, we're trying, we're just making little improvements to the calendars bit by bit, mm -hmm. um, as we go as we go along here. And I, I want to, well, I look forward to the other weeks. I know we can't go into them because we're going to make another video, but there's there's a lot happening this in this. Mm -hmm four weeks we have the ascension of our lord and some really neat images that uh we came up with or came across that pulled you know really tied to the liturgy in some beautiful ways so but i think i'll save all that for future videos i'll just let you guys get the calendar print it out put it on your wall mm -hmm. uh, yeah so well once again i just i just want to say thank you we cannot do this project without uh without your support folks who make the purchases to purchase these and print them out of the folks who actually mm -hmm. sign up for our membership. This is the only way we're able to do this work right now. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're working steadily till we get to that point where we can offer these fully printed. I know, I think I mentioned that uh, maybe most every time, but that is our goal next. You know, once we get all, this is the development phase. Right. That's why we're asking you guys are helping us. And we're asking you to tell your friends and family, we're still trying to gather the support we need to really do this development phase fully. Um, and then once this is done, we're going to be able to offer a calendar each year for the whole year. And some of the imagery will be continue, you know, continue to be improved. But this is something we want to that we're hoping to hook as many families as we can to having something like this up all the time where you could see in a beautiful way the liturgy each and every day, mm -hmm. you know, especially in these times in this time of. Uh, well, what, the, what Our Lady of Fatima has spoken of, a kind of diabolical disorientation. We need to be reoriented again, reoriented to, to the ancient treasures of the church. Mm -hmm. And we're just trying to do, this is like a little part, a little, a little piece where you could bring together a whole bunch of treasures all in one place, if you will. And, well, also you know. in a way that, that kids will, will connect with. So yeah. it's, it, it's hard when um, sometimes the kids, especially younger ones, have a hard time knowing what's going on with, 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 with the liturgical year and the liturgy and... Um, I found this to be hugely helpful with my kids, and I hope many of you uh, experience the same thing Good. with your children. Well, God bless, and until next week, y'all take care. Bye-bye.